to you today about something called plural nouns. Do you remember what the word plural means? Well, first of all, what's a noun? A person, place, or thing. A noun is a person, place, or thing. A noun is a person, place, or thing. It can also be like an idea, like the word love or the word courage. But what does it mean when I say plural? I have an M and N for the person who knows. Addison? It means more than one. Can you get an M and M? So plural means more than one. More than one. So instead of dog, I would say what? Dogs. What do you add to it to show that it means more than one? You add an S. Usually we just add an S, but there are instances where we add something a little different. To show something is plural, you might add an S. Other times you might add ES. Other times you might add IES. And there are times when you will um, add VES. Boxes, boxes. Keep this in mind because we're going to come back to it later. In this video, we're going to learn about singular nouns and plural nouns that end in S, E, S, and I, E, S. First of all, do you remember what a noun is? A noun is a person, place, animal, or thing. Then what's a singular noun? A singular noun means that there is one of something. A good way to remember this is that the word singular has the word single in it, which means there's only one. What about a plural noun? A plural noun means that there's more than one. A good way to remember this is that the word plural has the word plus hidden in it, which means more. Like in math, when you want to add more, you use the plus sign, right? We're going to look at three rules today to change a singular noun to a plural noun. Rule number one, add S at the end to make a plural noun. Let's look at a couple of singular nouns. Dog, girl, book, park. So how do you make these singular nouns plural to show that there is more than one? All you have to do is add S. Dogs, girls, books, parks. Easy peasy, right? But hold on a minute. There's an easy one. Let's look at the next rule. Rule number two. Add ES at the end to make a plural noun. Singular nouns that end in S, SS, SH, CH, X, or Z need an ES at the end to become plural. Just think of this weird hissing sound. Now remember the words at the beginning of this video? Boxes, boxes, boxes. Which one is spelled correctly? Box is a word that ends with an X, that hissing sound. So we're going to add ES. It's boxes. Let's make these singular nouns plural then. Bus, kiss, bush, bench, box, quiz. Because these words end in the hissing sound, they'll have an ES ending to become plural. Are you ready to make these words plural to show that there's more than one? Buses, kisses, bushes, benches, boxes, and quizzes. Good job! Now let's look at the final rule we will cover in this video. Rule number three. Drop the line and add I-E-S. Look at this word here, kitty. When the Y follows a consonant, drop the Y and add I-E-S. 
Just so you know, a consonant is a letter that is not A, E, I, O, or U. Let's take a look at this word, baby. Y follows B. B is a consonant. So let's drop that last letter, Y, and add I, E, S. Babies. We have many babies. Change these singular nouns to plural nouns by dropping the Y and adding I-E-S. Cherry, lady, puppy, party. Are you ready to make them plural? Right, let's do it. Cherry, drop the Y and add I-E-S. Lady, drop the Y and add I-E-S. Puppy, drop the Y and add I-E-S. Party. Drop the Y and add I-E-S. There, we did it. Good job. On this page, I have four different groups of words. Let's look at the first group, the one that starts with apple. Let's read this list of words that are in this group. Apple, cat, school, pizza, lamp. Cow, cake. So what do you think the rule is for words like this in this group? They start with us? Yes, in order to make these plural, instead of one apple, let's say I have two of them, what would I say? Apples. In this case, all I do, it's the easy peasy one. All I do is add an S, yes. Take a moment and make these nouns plural. Apple becomes apples. Cat becomes cats. Good. Let's look at the next group of words that starts with class. I'll say it. You repeat it. Class. class. Peach. Peach. Crash. Crash. Box. Box. Fox. Box. Quiz. Quiz. Bus. Bus. Please put a little star or um, an asterisk beside the word quiz because that one's a rule break. Okay, what about words like this? What do we do to show more than one class? What do you say? Classes. We say classes. If you remember from the video, if a word ends with an S sound or a CH sound or a SH sound or a X sound, it's all those slithery, choppy sounds. What did she call them in the video? Hissing sounds? Yeah, hissing sounds. If a word ends with a hissing sound, like sh, sh, or s, what do we do? Eat it. <laughs> what do we do? Yes, good. Add ES. Write that down. That's our rule. So class becomes classes. Peach becomes peaches. All right, work on those. A quizzes is a rule breaker. If I want to talk about more than one quiz, I actually have to double the Z and add E-S. Check to see if you got that one right. Good. Good, you did see it in the video. I, wonder, I was wondering if anybody was going to notice that. Let's look at the next set of words. I'll say it, you repeat it. Bunny. Bunny. Baby. Baby. Candy. Candy. Family. Fly. Fly. Story. Story. Sky. Sky. What do you notice about those words? Sky. 
They all end with Y. They end with an E sound like bunny or Y like fly. Do you remember what we do if a word ends with that sound? Remove the Y and add I-E-S. So to show the rule, I'm going to say no Y and add I-E-S. So bunny becomes bunnies. Work on those, please. In the video. If a word ends with an F sound, drop the F and add V E S. Leaf. I'll say it, you repeat it. Leaf. Wolf. Wolf. Shelf. Wife, Wife. Knife. Knife, grief, grief. Calf. calf. Notice that they all have the same ending. ending sound. I hear an F at the end. So leaf. If I'm talking about more than one, the word is leaves. Drop the F and add V E S. How about wolf? How do you spell wolves? W O L V E S. Good. Work on those. Oh, yeah, you're right. What do I do here? Wife becomes V E S. words that when we turn them, when we want to make it plural, when we want to mean more than one, they are irregular. They don't follow the rules. Foot. If there's more than one, we call them feet. Good. Goose. If there's more than one. Feet. Tooth. Feet. Man. Men. Woman. Woman. Women. That one's kind of a rule breaker. Child. Children. Mouse. Mice. Ox. Oxen. Person. People. Good. There's one sheep. We call it a... No. Sheep. We call it a sheep. Wait, look at this sheep. If there's a bunch of them in a field, we still call them... Sheep. Yes, check that out. Same. Same with fish. If there's one fish, we call it a fish. If there's a whole school of them, we still call them fish. Deer. If there's deer. a bunch of them, we call them deer. Moose. If there's a whole bunch of them, we call them moose. Mm -hmm. And there's another one. A challenge one. Maybe, maybe you know this. Right, add this word to the bottom. Cactus. If there's a whole field of them, I got an M&M for the person who knows how to make cactus plural. Is it Rochelle? No, it's not cactuses. Um, Le Leanne? No. Alina? No. Nice try, JC. Mm -mm. Coco, what'd you say? Cacti. Good job, girl. Come get an M&M. &M. Sometimes scientific words, we have an I. So if there's a bunch of them, we call them cacti. Different types of poetry, and we're on our last type. It's at the back. Find a page, page 19, and let's talk about a freestyle poem. A free verse poem has no set pattern or rules. You get to do whatever you want. It can be about whatever you want. It can be in any style you choose. 
Sometimes they rhyme, sometimes they don't. Here's an example of a free verse poem. A deserted island is calling to me. I want to go so I can feel free. The fresh blue water, the warm, warm sand. I wish for the beach to get away from this land. Now, did this poet choose to rhyme? Yeah, they chose to use um, an A, B, C, B pattern. A, B, C, B. Let me show you some other examples of what a free verse is. This is a poem by the famous poet named William Carlos Williams, and it's called The Red Wilbarrow. You have that one? What do you mean you had it? Oh, you did? Show it to me next time. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rain water beside the white chicken. I feel like in this poem you either love it or you don't. I like it because it makes me think of like a really, um, like an old fashioned farm. Simple times when life was simple. Here's one called Tiger by the famous William Blake. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? You like that one? You love it? So when I... I told the class earlier this morning, because they were like, I don't really know what to write about. Free verses are kind of spacey. They're kind of out there. They can be about anything. I told them to think about like a dream that they've had in real life, like a dream when you were sleeping. Um, because, excuse me, those can sometimes be a little crazy, right? Yeah. So what you could choose to write about is maybe a dream that you've had. Make it sound poetic. Use lots of describing words. Here's one that Max came up with that I really liked. I thought it was really poetic. A forest is calling me, and I feel this aura. It's calling me. I keep sensing it. And the aura. It was good, wasn't it? That was really good. No, I printed it. Um, here's one I wrote earlier about a dream I had when I was, oops, not in that one. It's in this one. One time I dreamed I was standing in the desert between beige sand and bright blue sky. Grandma was there. I could feel her near, but I couldn't see her. Now it's your turn. I want you to be as creative as you can. Think of something that inspires you, or maybe think of something you've dreamed about, and make it into a lyric or a, um, a freestyle poetic form. Yes, Liam. Love that dog, yes. So I'm gonna put on some nice soothing, soothing music. I want this to be complete quiet time so people can really think and dig into their imagination. If you finish in time, these are these poetry books are due today. So when you're finished with free verse, you're going to go back through your poetry book and see if there's anything that you need to finish. Understand? Any questions? All right, get started. ready for market day. In front of you, you all have your expense report. Some of you, um, I needed to make some corrections because your calculations were a little bit off. But what you're going to do right now is you are going to add up the amount of money that you borrowed from the bank for your loan to start your business. 
So look at the cost column, and I want you to add up the money in the cost column that you spent, and then where it says total expenses, write that number in the total expenses box. Do that now, please. Up shop, two things. You're gonna set up your shop, and you're gonna count the number of products that you have. So if you're selling bookmarks, you're gonna count how many you have. You're gonna put that number here, where my finger is. To set up shop, um, pick one desk that's close to your poster, and then you'll just drag it over there. Excuse me. You'll drag it closer over to your poster, and then you'll set out your products, the things that you're selling. Second thing to do is to count them. I want to know how many you have to sell. Market day. Each of you will get $10 to, to spend at any of the stores. Obviously, you need one person to man your store, and you need somebody who's going to collect money while the other people go and shop. Um, I'm going to let half of you shop. After about five minutes, we'll switch, and I'll let the other half of the class shop. If, uh, some of you sold out, which is pretty amazing. I, we we have so what you need to do as a group, I want to see how much money you have made. No, wait, no, wait. Shh. You are going to, together, count your money, count it twice to make sure, and write that number here. Are you watching, boys? Tell me how much you earned. Go ahead and start counting the blue off. That's okay. How much money they made, but there's another step. You have to pay back the bank for the money you borrowed on Friday. So on your paper, look to see how much your company needs to come and pay me. I'll be here waiting for your money. <laughs> Okay, so we need to calculate if our business was successful. A successful business makes a profit. That means after they've paid for their loan, they have money left over. That's called a profit. Say that word. Profit. If your business didn't have any money when we closed out market day, that is called a loss. Say that word. Wow. And that means that you owe money to the bank. It could also mean that you are bankrupt, meaning your business is now owned by the bank. So turn your paper over. Let's see if our company made a profit or a loss. Turn it over. And we're going to do some calculations. All right, so tigers. Tigers, are you listening? You 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 earned forty-six dollars, but you owed the bank forty-one dollars. So on your how much money did you have left over? Six dollars. Right, you had five dollars left over. Bookmark sweets. You earned thirty-eight, but you owed the bank twenty-two. How much money did you have left over? 16. Airplane Amigos. You earned 42. You owe the bank 19. How much did you have left over? 23. Okay. Uh, I can tell your future. You earned $25, but you owed the bank $20. How much did you earn? How much did you have left over? Good. And airplane girls, you earned nine, but you owe the bank 17. Do you guys know what happens in this situation when you actually owe more? Let's see what happens. So they they started, they earned nine dollars, but I have to minus what? What was it? 17? 17. Minus 17. So they actually are at a loss. 
They owe the bank how much? Eight. Eight. So here I'm going to put negative eight. All right. Now write your equation on your page on the back. Do that now, please. Mm -hmm. So for example, my imaginary company was called Cards, Inc. We earned 30. We owe the bank 17. So 13. 13. Did your company lose money or make a profit? Tigers, did you lose money or did you profit? Good, you made a profit. Bookmark Sweets, did you look, are you at a loss or did you make a profit? profit. Airplane Amigos? Profit. profit. I can tell your future? Airplane Girls? At a loss. Okay. So, next to number one, tell me, did your company lose money or make money? Or make a profit? Number two. Did you have products left over? How many? Did you have products left over? How many? So my imaginary company had, oh, I didn't write it down. I forgot to have you guys count, but if you guys had leftovers, write that number here. Like if you had left, did, did you guys have leftover airplanes? No. Okay, so you're going to put one. Amigos will write one. Bookmark girls, did you guys have bookmarks left over? So you're going to write that number here. Okay, now for who won? Number three, which company made the greatest profit? Who won? Airplane Amigos. They have made the most money. Let's write that down on your paper, please. Which company made the greatest profit? And four. This is an important one. Four and five are important. Why do you think that the Airplane Amigos made the greatest profit? Give me some reasons. Why did they win? Think for a minute. Why did the Airplane Amigos win, and why did your company not win? I mean, maybe you still made a profit, right? That's good, but um, how do you think that they ended up making the most money? What is your ideas? What do you think, um, Coco? They made more airplanes, perhaps. Um, JC? Yes, maybe they were popular. Um, what's another reason why they might have made more money, Amber? Um, good. Maybe their price was good. It wasn't too cheap or it wasn't too expensive. Their price was right where it should have been. Any other reasons why you think they won? What do you think, Addison? So they were popular, they had a good price, they had a lot of them to choose from. People thought they were more popular. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Rochelle? Yes. Write down number four. Why do you think they made the greatest profit? important question that you need to answer. You have to give me two answers. What could your company do differently next time? If we were to do market day again and you had the same team and you were selling the same thing, what could your company do differently next time in order to increase profits? Do you have any ideas? What could your company do next time in order to make more money? Aria? No, you are the same company, same profit. What could you do differently to make more money? What could you have changed? 
Yes? Good. Maybe your price wasn't good. Maybe you should have had a higher price. Or maybe, like the airplane girls, maybe their price was too high. And they had trouble selling them. What's another thing you could do to increase profits, Addison? Make more, make more, have more to choose from. Good. Or you could have lowered our price. Or lower the price if it was too high. Which the girls did eventually, and I think they sold them out. Yeah, they, they put it to too low. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. As soon as you have finished your reflection on market day, turn that in for